So let's talk about today's Nintendo Direct. This is something that, as I mentioned in my last video, I didn't quite know that I believed was going to happen. I was definitely doubtful that Nintendo would be prepared for a full traditional Nintendo Direct in the month of June to maybe match the energy of some of the other companies and competitors out there who have also been doing shows. And also, as we maybe remember last year, they did not give us a Nintendo Direct in June. So like I mentioned, I was dubious to believe some of the leaks and rumors and all of that stuff. I was open to it, but I didn't know if it was going to happen. And it did happen. It turned out that a lot of the things that were leaked and rumored turned out to be very true. So this is a win, man. We had a Nintendo Direct. It's always a great time. Love it or hate it or fall in the middle. A Nintendo Direct is just that wonderful event that we always look forward to a few times a year. And since we didn't know how the summer was going to play out, and we obviously have a lot of questions about Nintendo's holiday for 2023 in the back half of the year, we actually got to see a show today. And so how did I feel about it? I thought it was pretty good. I think it was, I think it was fine. The thing about this Nintendo Direct is there was kind of a lot riding on it because as I was just mentioning, not only did we want to see if Nintendo was going to match the energy of the rest of the industry by having a showcase over the summer, this was also about letting us understand the holiday and the back half of the year for Nintendo. After Pikmin 3, it was pretty much a huge mystery, especially from Nintendo on the first party front. Obviously, we knew we could expect some third-party games and some indie games and probably some ports and multi-platforms, stuff like that. We knew that there was going to be Pokemon DLC, which actually opened the Nintendo Direct today. But outside of that, we didn't know if they were going to have anything resembling a big first-party tentpole holiday title. And we didn't know if they were going to show us Metroid Prime 4 or anything about Metroid. Were we going to get Zelda, Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess ports? Were we going to get, some people thought, news about the Switch 2 or new hardware? You guys know that I certainly believe that that information is coming this year, but I really didn't expect to see anything like that today. In fact, I don't even expect to see that announced in a Nintendo Direct at all. And as we know, it turned out that there was no discussion about hardware this year. And there was no Metroid, which I'll be getting into. We did, however, get a couple of decent surprises. In fact, I would say there are two massive surprises. So, to me, these two massive surprises really made the show, just for my own personal tastes when it comes to gaming. But outside of those, I really thought everything else was just kind of standard fare. Nothing exciting, not a whole lot of games that appeal specifically to me. But that's okay, because everyone has a different viewpoint on the things that makes them excited. So let's quickly run through the things that got me the most excited from this show. And obviously I want to talk about Pikmin 4 because it's a game we already know about. I love that they spent some time on it in this presentation. I actually predicted that maybe they were going to end up spending even more time, simply because the game is only a month away from today, actually, and I thought this was going to be their chance to really push the game, and they did give us about three or four minutes dedicated to it, and what they showed was great. They doubled down on the nighttime levels, which I'm so excited for. That's a huge game changer. They talked about the Glow Pikmin, which, to my knowledge, I don't think we knew about before today. Very excited to see how that's going to work for the nighttime stuff. And they also confirmed and showed that you could play inside of people's houses, which... For Pikmin fans, you know that that's kind of a big deal, and that is going to be a huge environmental change to what we're used to playing in a Pikmin game. And as somebody who is just a massive fan of this franchise, I'm so excited. I think this game is going to be just damn near perfect. And so I loved what they showed. Now, one fantastic Pikmin surprise is that they also showed us that Pikmin 1 and 2 have been remastered in HD and are available for purchase on the eShop today. These were two shadow drops of HD ports of the first two GameCube Pikmin games. This is exciting to me because I played quite a bit of Pikmin 1 on the GameCube and Pikmin 2 I've barely played. So I think my plan is going to be to probably play Pikmin 2 first and maybe come back to Pikmin 1 down the road. So that was a really cool Pikmin surprise to kind of help build up hype for Pikmin 4 next month. Another really cool surprise, again for me personally, was Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, which was a 3DS game is coming to the Nintendo Switch. It's going to be ported in HD to the Switch, which is so amazing because I think that game is fantastic and we've already got Luigi's Mansion 3 on the Switch, which was amazing. And Dark Moon was incredible, especially for a 3DS game. Now the 3D effect was so good in that game that it's gonna be sad to not have that for the console version, but 
I kind of don't really care because this is the kind of game that should make it to the Nintendo Switch in some way. And in fact, I think there are other 3DS games that should get the same treatment. I think the obvious 3DS game I'm talking about would be Metroid Samus Returns. Man, imagine how cool it would have been if they would have also showed us that in this Nintendo Direct. In fact, I don't know why they haven't already done that. You know, after the success of Dread and Mercury Steam doing such a great job on two Metroid games, and Metroid Prime 4 is still being developed, so a great way to keep the hype train going for Metroid, of course, Prime Remastered released in February, is to do some kind of HD port of Samus Returns. A lot of people never played that fantastic game simply because it was like a last era Nintendo 3DS release. I mean, it did okay, but it should have done much better, and it probably would have if it had released maybe two or three years earlier. So that game deserves the, that, the kind of success I think a Switch release would see. And I actually think... I actually think eventually we will see something like that happen, but clearly today was not the day. However, we got Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, and to me that's great. All right, and let's talk about the first massive win and the first of what I consider two huge announcements today, and that is Super Mario RPG is real. There were a lot of talks and leaks about a Super Nintendo game of some kind, probably an RPG, getting a remake for the Switch. Not like a remaster necessarily, but a full remake. And people were basically considering it to be either Chrono Trigger or Mario RPG, at least from the leaks that I saw. And it turns out that Mario RPG is real and it is awesome looking. Now, I'm excited because... You guys know, as an old man who grew up in the 8 and 16-bit era, and I love those eras, Mario RPG is one of those few huge Super Nintendo first-party games that has eluded me my entire life. I've never played it. I never went back to play it. Even though I'm not an RPG fan, I always wanted to try it because it's Mario and because I've heard amazing things about it. It's a legendary title. And so this is going to be a great opportunity for me to play it. I am so stinking excited. And it's really cool to see what Nintendo does when they decide to remake some of their games, right? To me, I put this game in the same category as Link's Awakening, where they've remade it with kind of like that chibi art style that I don't like in most games, but when Nintendo does it for their characters, like in Link's Awakening and like in the Mario RPG here, I love it. And maybe it's because I'm a sucker for Nintendo's first party stuff, but I just think it works so well with like their their colors and their art styles and the vibrancy of it all. And this game has such a great reputation and I just love to see that they're doing this. In, in what I consider to be a lighter back half of the year, I see this as a huge title. It's releasing in November and I think it's gonna be just amazing. I am pumped. Now we have to talk about one very weird thing, which is this Peach game that they alluded to. There's some kind of Princess Peach title that doesn't seem to be like a remake of that, uh, like, was it, I think, a DS or a Game Boy Advance Peach title? I can't remember. This was, like, mid-2000s. I don't remember if it was Game Boy or DS. I think it might have been DS. But there was, like, a Peach one-off side-scroller game where you played Peach. And uh, I was like, maybe that's what this is? But no, this is, like, a new title. It's coming out in 2024, by the way. So it's, I think, the only Nintendo First party Nintendo game that they talked about that's coming out in 2024 today. So we know of one 2024 Nintendo title that's not also Metroid Prime 4. Because I think that's that's 2024. And uh, they showed us like, I don't know, 10 seconds. They were like, it exists. Here's 10 seconds of random footage and we'll talk about it later. It's 2024. That's all they said. So it's not something that has me like jumping out of my boots with excitement. I mean, I like Peach. I like the idea of a Peach game. Uh, I thought this looked okay. It, it just didn't wow me necessarily, but obviously I want to see more. Um, Nintendo's first party stuff is always great, especially if it's in the Mario universe. It's very strange how they decided to announce it. If it's a 2024 game, was this the first footage of a Nintendo Switch 2 title? I'm joking. I'm sure it's not. It's going to be a Switch game, but I don't know. I just thought that was kind of funny. And then, of course, we end on the big Mamma Jamma, their one last thing, which was a surprisingly massive reveal, and it is officially confirming the new 2D Mario game. This is real. This has been two or three years in the making there's been discussions and rumors and theories about this for years. And it turned out to be real. We saw it today. It's releasing in October, and it's called Super Mario Wonder. Now, I'm getting a little bit of crap on Twitter because I tweeted about this game being really great and exciting, and I know it's going to be a hit, but I'm not... I didn't really put it on the same hype tier level as a new 3D Mario game. And I gotta be honest, 
I stand by that. Now, Mar 2D Mario games always have the potential to sell more than 3D Mario games, so in terms of the dollars and cents business for Nintendo, who's the ones making money, I'm not making money from Mario game sales, and you're not making money from Mario game sales. But in terms of the balance sheet, yeah, this game is going to be a big hit and make a lot of money, and it's clearly their big tentpole release for 2023. However, I don't think it's on the same tier as far as impact and hype for, like, you know, the game fans and those of us who watch these presentations and who are tuned in as a 3D Mario game would have been, or maybe some other larger tier kind of announcement or something. Like, let's say they showed Metroid Prime 4. This game, Mario Wonder is going to sell more than Metroid Prime 4. So again, I'm not crazy in the sales side, but I think that the hype and the surprise around a Metroid Prime 4 or like a 3D Mario or I don't even know, something else I'm not even thinking of, could have potentially felt like a larger scale tentpole release. But I don't even want to talk about that part anymore because at the end of the day, the game looks great. I'm thrilled that it exists. And like I did say, yeah, it's going to sell a lot. This game is going to sell 10 million before the end of the year almost for sure. Now, I will admit, even though I'm a huge fan of 2D platforms and obviously I'm a lifelong Mario fan, I've never been the biggest fan of 2D Mario platformers since the new Super Mario Brothers series was introduced. Those games aren't bad. I mean, I really enjoyed the original one on the DS, but outside of that one, I never really found much to get excited about. I didn't really love the Wii games. I tried the new Super Mario Brothers U on the Wii U. Didn't really care for that, and so I have kind of a weird relationship in the modern 2D Mario era. The classic games, 8 and 16-bit era, give it to me all day. The newer ones, I just think that they're okay. They're mediocre at best to me. They're not bad, but they're just mediocre. Mario Wonder is in an interesting spot where it doesn't look as different from the new Super Mario Brothers series as I would have expected a new Mario game to look, a new 2D Mario game to look like. Mostly because the rumors had always said that it was kind of a reboot of 2D Mario. And so, if the rumor said it's another new Super Mario Brothers game, I probably would have pictured Mario Wonder. But when people said it was kind of a reboot or, or a different 2D Mario series, I pictured something that was going to look much more distinct from the new Super Mario Brothers style. And I see Mario Wonder as a little bit similar to that in style. However, when I take a step back and realize that it's going to be about the gameplay and it's just nice to see a new Mario game, I get excited again. And it's worth noting, Mario's character models specifically, not so much like Peach and Luigi and stuff, but tell me if I'm crazy. I'd have to rewatch it again, but his character model looked pretty different and pretty unique. I feel like they did go for something unique visually when it comes to Mario himself. And that part I like. And then we get into the gameplay mechanic of, I don't remember what it's called, but there's like a wonder power or a wonder switch or something you do in each level that will change the overall uh, 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 mechanics of the level. Like it goes into shadow or things start moving in different ways or the trees start walking or whatever. They showed all these kooky things. Mario turning into an elephant, hello. I mean, we saw all these cool things that happens to the worlds and so that part's exciting. I like seeing what the world map looked like and it's just a new 2D Mario game and I like that they're trying to evolve it beyond the new Super Mario Brothers brand. So I think that by the time we get to play the game, this. October, man, I'm so excited it's October. Uh, I think it's going to really let us know how different it feels from those games. So this is a huge announcement. Make no mistake. Don't misinterpret my words. I think this game is going to sell well. I think it's going to review very strongly, probably 85, 88 or so on Metacritic. And I think it's going to be great. Like I'm going to buy and play this game. It's going to be, you know, this is basically Nintendo's big tentpole title. Whether or not this lands for you is up to you and your personal tastes. To me, it doesn't feel like the most exciting holiday tentpole title, but does it look like a great game that I'm going to buy and enjoy? Absolutely. So everything else they showed was the stuff that, like I said, didn't really do a whole lot for me, even though there was some good stuff. But, you know, there was like Just Dance, who cares? There was a couple of cozy game farming simulator games. They're just not for me, so they didn't move the needle for me. A couple of decent RPG announcements for RPG fans, and so, again, they don't move the needle for me, but it was nice to see a few of those things showed up for people who like those kinds of games. Um, and then they showed, you know, so here's the thing. They showed, like, the Metal Gear collection, and they showed the Batman Trilogy collection. These are cool games to have on the Switch, don't get me wrong. I'm a fan of both franchises. I mean, I'm not, like, a huge Metal Gear fan, but I like it well enough. Um, and the Batman games are certainly very good, but... All we're looking at are old games just getting ported to the Switch, which we see happen a lot. And so good games are good games, always. But 
is this really needle moving stuff for people? I mean, you've either already played these games, or if you haven't, you might not have ever been interested in playing them. And if you are, there's probably better places to play them. So I'm in a weird place with, with announcements like these because it's like, they don't really change the fate of the Switch. They don't really add much to the 2023 game release here to me because they're old games that most people have already played. But like I said, good games are good games and it's nice to see them no matter how old they may be. So, you know, do with that what you will. And then of course, there was no Metroid. This I tweeted about, I did not expect Metroid Prime 4 to show up. I know a lot of people wanted it and thought this was a time and a lot of people hinged the quality of this direct solely on seeing Metroid Prime 4. And as the world's biggest Metroid fan, obviously I relate to that, but I did not expect it today. I tweeted about that and it didn't show up today. Now, not seeing Metroid Prime 2 or 3 remastered is a bit disappointing, or even, like I said, the Samus Returns port, or something else Metroid-related. It's interesting that they didn't talk about the franchise at all, and they had nothing to show, but it is what it is. Um, I'm not disappointed simply because I didn't expect it, and also because I do believe we will see Metroid Prime 4 before 2023 is over. I think it's happening at the end of the year. I did not expect to see it today. And so to wrap up here, the big question is, do you view this Nintendo Direct as a sign that Nintendo has a strong holiday or a sign that it's a light holiday? Do you view this, do you view this as a sign that the Switch 2 is coming sooner than later and that the Switch is at its end of the end of its life? Or do you view it as a sign that the Switch 2 is very far away and the Switch has many years to go? Everyone is going to have different viewpoints. There's no right or wrong. I see this as a sign of a slightly lighter holiday. And yeah, I do think Switch 2 is still coming soon, you guys. I think they're probably going to reveal at the end of this year. I'm, I'm, after seeing this direct, which tells us everything we need to know, I'm still leaning towards thinking we're going to see or hear about the Switch 2 before the year is over. And the Switch 2, the Switch is nearing the end of its life as Nintendo's sole hardware on the market. Now, of course, I could be wrong. And again, I'm not downplaying the significance of Mario Wonder or Mario RPG. I'm stoked for those games. But that's just kind of my initial gut reaction. As time goes on, uh, we'll see how it evolves. And I'll make a video specific to this exact topic in probably another day or two. It's a very interesting thing to think about. You know, we all expect a September Direct as well. But we have to remember a September Direct, if it happens, which it almost for sure will, isn't going to tell us more about Nintendo's 2023 holiday because September is already fall. Like, they're, they're not going to have a huge megaton surprise for this year in September. They're going to be talking about games for 2024 in a Nintendo Direct in September. And or, and slash or, you know, the Switch 2 or whatever they do there. I think that's more likely to happen in September or fall. We're not going to, we're not going to see anything more about Nintendo's holiday. At least anything more that's major. We now know the biggest, most important bullet points of Nintendo's back half of 2023. It's Pikmin 4, it's Mario RPG, it's Mario Wonder, and those are three really exciting, massive, excellent games. And so we know what we need to know about the back half of the year. September is going to be an exciting direct, but it's not going to color 2023 anymore. You know, that's my kind of feeling about it. So this is what I thought. I know some people really hated this direct. Um, I didn't hate this direct. I, I thought it was okay. I'd give it like a solid B. Middle of the road B, two huge exciting announcements with the two Mario games. Everything else to me didn't move the needle much, but I thought it was a decent show. So yeah, that's what I think.